Welcome to Gotta Front. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest today is Meg Navarro. She runs for the November Project. She is also known as Megatron Runs on her Instagram and blog. Indeed, one <laughs> of her blog caused quite a controversy a few months ago. She shared her fear that a fat person cannot be a real runner. I'm thrilled to have Meg as a guest. Meg, before we go into that blog and that nasty comment some other women made actually about you when they mm -hmm. saw you running, before we go into that, let's introduce you to our audience. Tell us where you were born. There's something about your growing up years. Okay. I was born and raised College Point, it's in Queens. I have two brothers, a younger sister. We went to school there. I lived there for 25 years before I moved to Virginia, and I, then I went to Virginia Tech. And then after that, I moved back up here to be with my husband, Pete. Uh, growing up, I was not really that athletic. I played on the tennis team for my high school, but that was about it. Uh, none of us in my family, immediate family, are runners. Mm -hmm. I do actually have two uncles who run. Uh, but we're just kind of, we weren't seriously out of shape or anything like that, but. We weren't like team sports, uh -huh. big into that. So you said you went to Virginia Tech. What did you study there? Microbiology. My gosh, that's, a, that's a tough science. Yes, yes it is. Oh my gosh. I mean, it, it takes, uh, sometimes people take a little extra time to do it because it's so tough. It, it is. I wasn't, I didn't go straight from high school to college. So for me, it took me a while to finish. I worked my way through school, but it was great. It was, oh, Virginia Tech is a great school. You did it the hard way. Yes. All but right. the good way, the good you know, way. you appreciate it more. All I right, think. all right. But you know, college tuition is a big thing nowadays yes. because a lot of kids are, yes. got a lot of debt. Did you have to pay a lot of money? Because my parents lived in Virginia already. They had moved when I was 18 okay. down there. I was able to get in-state tuition. Oh, excellent. Because um, I lived there for a year before I applied, before Apply. I started going there. And that make a big difference? And a huge difference because it's a state school. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So all that right, was cool. great. For me. All right, and you have your, your degree, in, and you said your husband was living in New York. So how did guys meet? Well, we Is met there before. A story? Yeah, well, we met before I left to go to Virginia. Uh -huh. uh, we knew each other. We I worked at a place called Austin's Ale House in Kew Gardens, and uh -huh. he's a court officer in Kew Gardens. So we met there. Okay. But I was already had made plans to move. Like this was something I wanted to do for my life. I wanted to go to college. Right. Right. So I went. So you had a long-distance romance? Um, not, not really. Uh, we kind of like drifted in and out. Oh, okay. And then when I turned 30, that was it. Uh, when I turned 30, we just kind of met again by chance, and that was it. That was it. We uh, were, married were married like a year later. All right. <laughs> All right. So you're coming back to New York. I came he, back, yeah. He's, he's in New York, which is good, and I guess you... you you landed a job right away? Not in my field right away, but eventually I did, and now I work for Long Island Jewish in the genetics lab. Genetics lab, and what do you do there? I study people's chromosomes, and depending on what we're looking for, will depend on what I'm looking at. Uh, most of the things I like to work on are the bone marrows, so I could tell what kind of leukemia a patient would have, and then that, along with other things, would determine treatment. Oh my gosh, so it's a Kind of an emotional job. It can be, but we also do good things. Um, I, you know, I get to tell people whether or not they're having a boy or a girl for amnios and stuff like that. And, oh, okay, that's a lot. And of you know, happiness. treatment if with cancer treatments, a lot of them work so well now uh -huh. that we do see a lot of our patients go into remission. So and that you know, feels that's, good. that's a great thing. So you're so, part of the team. I you're, hope I, I like to think I am. You're a yes. technician, but yes. you know, you're. They I'm not the, the you know, I'm not the doctor giving the treatment, but we are giving the information, the information. to the doctor. Yes. And so you get to test the before and the after. Yes. And yep. Exactly. So you stay with the same patient throughout the treatment? Or? Yes. Uh, sometimes, like a, we'll get a patient uh, day one, like a month later, and then they keep coming back for a few years sometimes to wow. make sure they're in remission, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of, sometimes an emotional investment in yes. it, you know. Yeah, especially I don't ever get, get to meet them. the patients face to face, but I, you know, I do feel like an attachment to them when I see their names again yeah, and again, yeah, yeah. you know. All right, now, how long have you been doing this? About 10 years now. All right, 10 years now. Now, during the early years of this, were you actively involved physically? No, no, I, I was not, I, as a matter of fact, Running, I started running to get into better shape. I was 
in 2008, I was probably about my heaviest, being about 220 pounds. I'm only 5'2", so it's kind of a lot. A lot, yeah. Uh, I was very, very out of shape, and I kind of just started to realize that something needed to change. So in 2010, I began seeing my trainer, who I still go to, Nora. She's like family now. And she wanted me to get cardio in. You know, she was there to help me strength train and work with weights and things like that. But she needed me to, to work on myself outside of her. So I started walking, because that was all I was able to do. Hmm. And then in 2011, my husband Pete wanted to start running, so we did couch to 5K together. It's like a walk-run interval thing, uh -huh. and then it's, you start off with more walking, and then by the end, you're just, you're just running. Okay, like, cool. And you can run a 5K. And where did you do your training? In a park where we lived in Valley Stream, there's like two loops, a mile and a mile and a half. Okay. So we just kind of went there and we had each other. We, we run at different paces. Pete's always been faster than I have, but he used to like run back in my direction. And we used to like, we would just do it together. Okay. Whatever the timing was, we knew. Okay, and then, great. He was great support. Yes, you, yes, you it was. You needed that at the beginning. You have to have it. I think, you know, it's very scary to be out there. Oh, yeah. All right. And then All we right. picked a, a race to have as a goal race. Originally, it was going to be the Tunnel to Tower race, okay. but I was so nervous that we actually picked a small 5K in Valley Stream the week before Tunnel to Tower, so I can kind of get my nerves out. Oh, okay. Was that a legitimate race? To it, was, it was. It was. A, it wound up that we were uh, doing the Couch to 5K program, and the guy was handing out flyers that day while we were in the park oh, for okay. the following weekend, and I was like, we should do this, and it would okay. make me feel better. Okay, and cool. I did, and I finished, and it, it took me like over 42 minutes to finish my first 5K. Okay, now you went to Brooklyn? It goes through the tunnel where Stephen Siller, oh, he was okay. a firefighter who okay. on 9-11 ran through the tunnel to get to the towers, okay. and then, um, you know, unfortunately passed away, but his family oh, does this yeah, to get yes, back it's, every it's an year. annual event mm -hmm, now, it's very mm -hmm, well known. Mm -hmm. It got wobbling. Right. Yes, yes. And, you know, you're, we have, like, tons of medals and T-shirts now. It kind of started a, a thing with us where now just about every weekend we're at a race somewhere, oh, whether it's right. in New York City or Long Island. Oh, right. But we mentioned at the beginning that you run with the November project. Yes. So how did that happen? John Honekamp is one of the co-leaders of November Project here in New York City, and him and Pete went to high school together. Now, they lost touch with one another after high school, but we saw him one day at the New York Roadrunner's office. Uh, we were picking up some bibs, and then they kind of got reacquainted then. And he, him and Paul Leak, who's one of the other co-leaders of November Projects, were actually our original coaches for the first time we did the marathon in 2013. So we trained with them before November Project. Okay. And then that was in 2013. 2000, early 2014, Pete gets a text from John, hey, I'm going to do this thing. It's called November Project. Right. It was in Runner's World. You probably heard of it. And we had. Uh, it was up in Boston. It was starting to spread out. They were going to create the group here, and they, you know, John wanted Pete and me to come. Oh, so. so you were inaugural members of the New York City. Pete more than I am. Um, at the time, they only had a 6.30 group, and because of work, I couldn't really go. And I'm, I wasn't really confident about going. Okay. No matter how welcoming people say they are, sometimes they're not. Okay. And I was, even though I had run a marathon, and I know this sounds crazy, I really, I really didn't have a lot of confidence in my running. I really didn't feel like I was a real runner. Okay. I was, you know, I don't bang out seven minute miles like a lot of other people do. And, uh. and I was like, oh, you know, that's for you. You go, you have fun. And then he went for a few months and then I was, he, he talked about it so much. I was like, I'm gonna try it. And then that was it, I was hooked. You hooked, so you went to the 5.31. Five, then they started doing 5.30, and oh. now I go all the time. I try to go all the time, all the time. I should say. I think you said every Wednesday. Every Wednesday at 5.30 and 6.30 at Carl Shorts Park. And then on Fridays, they travel around the city at 6.30. Oh. And Mondays, they do bridges now at 6.30. Excellent. I, I know they do more than running. They do calisthenics. Yes. They do burpees. We I've seen do the photos. Like, <laughs> they'll tell you, you know, run to there, then do five burpees, then run over here, do 10 push-ups, and then... It's a lot of fun, though. You're getting a great workout in while you're having a lot of fun. Okay. And, the, the, like, one of the things I have to say is that I did not get my confidence as a runner until I joined November Project. Like, I've, no one there ever makes you feel like you're not good enough to be part of the team. Wow. And there are people who can BQ there. There are people who run 100-mile races there. There's all sorts of people there, and never once was I ever felt 
Well, it speaks a lot about this. It does. It's really a movement because I think you mentioned it's in other it's places. It's in about uh, like over 30 cities now across the United States, Canada, and there's like now they have London, they have Amsterdam. So you you could go, you know, now we, tri we plan trips around where we, where we can get a workout in too, you know, and see other people. I see other people, other cities. Yeah, other cities and, and, and stuff like that. And you might even plan a London a trip. Yes, um, you, you know. never know. <laughs> oh, wow. That's excellent. Yeah. Now, you mentioned before you joined the November Project, you did a marathon the year before. Which marathon was that? New York City was my first marathon oh. in 2013. But even though you completed that, you didn't feel like a real runner? I didn't. I It took me over six hours to finish my marathon. And yes, I'm not saying it's not a big accomplishment. It was a huge accomplishment. But, you know, you, you see, you know, there was always little snide remarks about, you know, oh, you know, but I, I finished mine in three and two and whatever. And... I, sometimes it gets to you. It okay, kind of, you know, it, it's, I'm out there doing the best that I could do. Right, right. But, you know, sometimes I'd be like, oh, I don't really, I don't know if I fit in. Okay, all right. And that's, that's the thing about November Project November is Project. you always so, fit in. So before you joined November Project and you trained for this New York City Marathon, I think you trained with Roadrunners? Uh, they have a virtual trainer. So it's an online, you can do 20 week or 16 week and they, base, they will do it based on your pace. So you put in some information about how, how much you run, your pace, and things like that, and then they'll have a program for you. And then there's, like, you have, like, the e-coaching. So John and Paul were my coaches, so I was able to talk to them whenever okay. I wanted to okay. also. And these are the two guys mm -hmm. that eventually found it in November. The, they're in New York City, November, yeah. Okay. Now, did, I think you said they started in Boston first? Boston, that started with uh, Brogan and Boyan. They were just two guys who wanted to keep each other accountable through the month of November for working out. Oh, that's why and it's called November? That's why it's called November Project. And they did. And then they started putting it out on social media that, hey, we're going to be here on blah, 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 blah. And people started showing up. And that's where it's a big, big tagline for them is just show up. And it's true. It's all you have to do. Okay. And just then, show up. And then John the from Roadrunners picked up on it. So let's mm -hmm. start the New York chapter. Yep. And your husband was one of the first to, what, to uh, go. Not on the first, first day, but yeah, he was definitely one of the first core cool right, members. Well, a yeah. pioneer. That's yeah. good. Yeah. You know, it speaks well of him. Yeah. Did, it, when, he, when you did the New York, did he do New York with you? Yes. Oh, yes. excellent. Yeah. It sounds like he did a little... Little, little better because oh, he said he's yeah. he's much faster than I am. All right, but then he came back. And <laughs> you know, and then we well, we always this is how we do our races. He's faster than I am, so we always like kind of pick a a spot to meet, basically. So he knows like, and I'm getting back. You know, I'm getting a little faster and faster as I go on, but we'll always find a place where we can meet. And actually, now especially at the New York Road Runners, November Project always has like a cheering section too. And so we'll, uh, we'll just meet at the cheering section. Oh, okay, whatever mile it is. Whatever mile, time. yeah. And that, that's the great thing about social media is you could just put it out there. All right, I'm going to go cheer for this race. I'll be, you know, at mile two or whatever. Okay. And, okay. and people well, just sometimes stop. you can even uh, set up uh, an aid station and we can have water yes. and So supplies. this year, we, they've done it for the past couple of years at the New York City Marathon. And this year they'll be doing it at mile 10. Okay. So, so everybody official. who's doing it, mile 10, you're going to have mile a lot of 10. fun. All right. We mentioned that you're also a blogger. When did you start the Megatron Run? <laughs> um, I love that name. Thank you. <laughs> back when I was training for my first marathon. In New York City. New York City, back in 2013. A few people had reached out to me via Facebook and said, oh, I love your stories. It's so encouraging to hear about your running and things like that. And, you know, a couple of people even said that they started running because of, of the posts I was putting on Facebook. And, you know, that meant a lot to me. So I decided to just kind of start talking about it. You know, people think to be a, a runner, you have to be like, you know, 5'7 and 110 pounds and perfect, and you don't. You just have to put one foot in front of the other. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, got, I get a lot of feedback from it. I'm not going to say I'm quite active. I don't do it like weekly or anything like that. But I, I do try to put, you know, a few more, you know, a few things, especially things that mean a lot to me about, okay. you know, out there. But then something not so nice happened. Mm. Somebody, a couple of women, I think, screamed at you. Well, they were, they didn't really scream at me. I'm not even 100% sure they meant for me to hear it. I think they were more talking to themselves and just making fun of me. Oh. But they said I was too fat to be a real runner. And so, this happened when? This happened uh, during the summer this year uh, while I was training, actually, for my fourth marathon. 
So Which one was that? The Hamptons? Hamptons Marathon. Okay. Yes, on October 1st, I did Hamptons. So it was marathon number four, but I'm not really a real runner. Oh, right. But so, I think I remember it just for an instant you were afraid I, I that was, you were going to take that to heart. Yeah. You know, the truth is, if, it, if this had been back when I was training for the 2013 marathon, I'm not sure I would have ever ran again because I was very hard on myself as a runner. I didn't need to hear it from other people, but having the confidence that I have now as a runner, and it doesn't matter what my pace is or anything like that, I'm, I, I feel like a real runner now. So no one could take that away from me, but if I had been that other person still, I, I wouldn't, and that's what made me mad, because I know people who are just starting out running, who, and I remember what that feels like. What if it was said to them? Would they, would they have walked away that night and never run a gun? You know, and like, I'd, I would have missed out on so many things that have been so great in my life in the past few years because of running, if I had left. Oh, right. So running has transformed Yes, life. it has. So what kind of reaction postings did you get when you, when you put it on Facebook? Or a lot of people you? were angry at the girls. And, you know, for me... I couldn't, the girls could be sitting right in front of me like you and I wouldn't know it was them because mm -hmm. I didn't notice their faces or anything like that. I didn't want to make it about them because it's not. But I got a lot of positive reaction too. You know, like people who said, no, you should be out there running. You're, you know, keep blogging, keep running. We love hearing your stories. And, and quite a few people who asked if they can uh, show it to their groups, like uh, you know, people who are leading groups of new runners. So that was that was touching to me to have that. Wow, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. So your role model, so many ways. I, I, you know, I'd like to. It's. I'd like to think so. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, turned out to be that. Yeah, didn't, I, didn't didn't, I didn't intentionally set out to be that way, but you know, it, it is nice. It's because I know what it feels like. Yeah. Of so course. that's terrific. Now, I think it doing a, a challenge for next year and, you, and you're fundraising for it. I am. For a very special project. Tell us about that. So I run with the Heron Project. Chris Heron is a famous basketball player who is in recovery from a heroin addiction right now. And he started an organization to help with prevention of, uh, with addiction. He goes around, he talks to a lot of the high schools to, to talk to them about what happened in his life. And then he decided to form a running part of that. Uh, so we, we get together, we run races, we raise money, and the money goes to like patient treatment and navigation and recovery coaches and just helping people along uh, with their addiction, uh, with their recovery from their addiction, I okay. should say. I think this uh, addiction is personal for you and your husband? Yes. My husband, Peter, is in recovery from alcohol addiction since mm -hmm. January of 2011. So to him, it means a lot to, to run for this charity, to know that he's giving back. All right. So he's in recovery, or mm -hmm. I don't know what they, is they call term? It, Yeah, the recovery. Yeah, for five years now. Five years. Excellent. Five-year mm -hmm. anniversary. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, January was. January. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, you know, the, Addiction has this big, big stigma to it. Yes. I remember when Betty Ford, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the first lady, mm -hmm. when she came out, it, people were shocked. Right. That what? This affects right. all, all levels of society. Absolutely. But That's one of the things that we try to educate people on uh, is that it's a disease. It's not a moral choice. So it can happen to anybody, anywhere. Right. So, so it's a medical condition. Yes, it is. So I think you were telling me that one of the medical societies the has identified the, yes, it. Yes, the American Medical Association has uh, declared it a disease. Okay. So uh, hopefully that breaks a lot of the stigma around All right. it. All right. Yeah, you just, you know, people think you can just give up, but right. you can't. Once, right. once, uh, and some of it is uh, genetics, if you have that. I know when I was young, I was taught that if, if you are, have a parent who suffers from an addiction, you're four times more likely okay. to become an addict yourself. So one of the ways you can prevent that is to never pick up a drink or mm -hmm. anything like that. So a lot of things, they also educate the younger kids that, you know, it's not okay to go party on a Friday night. 
you know. And get smashed. And get, right, you know, why are you gonna do that? Be involved in other things, don't be involved in that. So that's, that's a huge part of the Heron Project and also. that's part of the educational thing. Mm -hmm. Great, and I guess there are other programs throughout the country for addiction. I guess they, they have resources to Yes, you know, to all point the different, to them, with a bunch like the of different. Like the Betty Ford Foundation, if you're in California mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. forth. Like if they, they'll, if a person reaches out for help with them, they will try to help them navigate them into the, the proper treatment center for them. Okay. Um, you know, insurance, all that, all that stuff. All right, yeah. all right. And, and again, that's uh, so, so much in the news because of drugs coming mm -hmm. in and it's affecting the wealthier suburbs yes, it was heroin, you know? yes, it's like, heroin. So it hasn't gotten any better. Nope. Well, some people think they're going to build the wall to solve this problem. But then the other, one of the other questions that comes up is that people that push drugs, you know, what should happen to them? Do they should, they should automatically go to prison if they're convicted of that? I, 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 I wouldn't know what to say about that. Um, That's, you know, there's always, yeah. there's more than one uh, angle to this. Right, exactly. There's some people that, that succumb to it and then there are people that are pushing it. Right. And there's a controversy. Uh, it would be great if they, they if we didn't have people, you know, yeah, if we didn't you know, have heroin on the streets. You know, what do you do with those people that are to... pushing drugs on, or people that, that shouldn't be doing that? Yeah. I that's the big, uh, uh, yeah. that, that's you have a big to leave discussion up to the in the country. Courts. Yeah, I know. It's Should true. they go to prison, or do they need treatment? I mean, some of them probably do need treatment. Some of them probably themselves are addicted to drugs. Uh, I guess you'd have to take that on a case-by-case -case basis. I okay. really don't know. It's no easy answer. No easy answer on that one, no. Okay. You said you could be running for 2017 on behalf of the Heron Project. Uh, yes, I'll be Which running. Which uh, project um, is that? Which uh, race, I should I'm say? I'm going to be running Badwater, Cape Fear. Uh, it's in March of 2017, and it will be my first 50 mile race. 50 mile? I think you've already done it. You've done I 50K? I did the 50K this year with the Heron Project also, and it was, it was wonderful. We just had, again, the Heron Project is a lot like November Project where you meet these people on the team and you, you just become like an instant family. November Project is my family, Heron Project is my family without a doubt. Okay, Badwater, but Badwater, Badwater. has, I didn't realize it's a brand name. There's yes. the Badwater 135 right. in Death Valley on the West Coast, mm -hmm. but this Badwater is- It's in North Carolina. Coast. It's considered uh, a very vacation worthy spot. Yes. You know, it isn't it's like beautiful. Death Valley. It's like, it's, it's a small island. You cannot bring a car on it. You drive around in golf carts, and uh, there's just all these, like, you know, houses on there. People live there, but a lot of them are rental houses. We rented this beautiful house in March, and it was like 10 miles on the road, a little bit of trail thrown in there, and then it was like 20 miles on the beach. This is the, the 50K? That was the 50K, that? yeah. Okay, but this time you're this up time you're gonna do, 50 uh, miles. Yeah, I'm going to do 50 miles, so 40 of it will be on the beach. Oh, on sand? On sand. Oh, excellent. That should be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting, sure. <laughs> yeah, have you run on Tough. sand before? Yeah, just the, the 50K, so 20 oh, miles was, in the sand. That sun. was also yeah. on, mm -hmm. partly on sand. Mm -hmm. All right. Probably have chariots of fire in your <laughs> in I'm going to need something, I think, yes. Because that on opens repeat. up with yes, the runners yes, running on, on sand. Yes, yes, on the beach, yes. Oh, excellent. And your husband going to do it with you again? He will. He's going to do the 50K. Yes. And then after that, he'll crew for you. Yes, that's <laughs> it. He's going to hang out, chill out, wait for me to finish. All right, so that's uh, obviously the big uh, event for next year. Yes, that's my goal. Now, and coming up, you're going to be doing the New York City Marathon. Yes, I will, yes. And that'll be for prep for next year. Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of, I, I, I tried to do, I trained for Hamptons in October. That was for fun. And then I, New York City will kind of be uh, just fun. For fun. Yeah. Are, you, are you running that with the November project? Yes, of course. Or you'll be wearing this shirt? Probably, yes. Oh, I haven't picked right. out my outfit yet, but yeah, it will be November project. Okay, um, well, you said they're on mile 10. They're so at mile 10. You want to get there and yes. get the cheers. Well, they probably know you. Yeah, they know me a little bit. <laughs> but, All right. you know, like I said, November project to me is family, without right. a doubt. Now, professionally speaking, you're, you're this analyst of looking at bone marrow. Mm -hmm. What do you see for yourself professionally? I enjoy what I do a lot. So honestly, I am very happy where I am, and that's what I would like to do. Continue for, doing. If, yeah, continue doing until they tell me to retire. <laughs> retire. Well, you got a long, long, I got a while to go. Yeah. I guess the equipment gets better. Yes. So you've been doing it for ten years. What's the biggest change that, um, that has occurred? It does get a lot more automatic now. Uh, 
I mean, I know people who work in, in genetics who you literally used to take a picture with a camera and in the dark room and you would cut the chromosomes out like that. Now it's all on the computer where you could just cut it on the computer when you're looking at it. You don't take a picture anymore. And now we, now we have to put the slide on the microscope and look at it. Now there's machines that will even do that for you and capture the picture for you. And wow. then you just, so you don't have to t spend the time looking at the slides and finding okay. the cells. So you could do more analysis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So, so what do you think? You think uh, there will be a cure for uh, the, these kind of cancers in our lifetimes? Maybe. Uh, the, the treatment has certainly gotten a lot better. All right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. I would right. not doubt it. Well, on that positive note, <laughs> thank you so much for thank coming Thank you for in. having me. It's been awesome. Thank you.